I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today to start a new series where I'm going to be looking in detail at different aspects of the sensor performance of the new Canon 5D Mark IV. And specifically, we're going to look at, in this first episode, at the dynamic range from the camera. In a second episode, we'll look at the high ISO performance to see if there are any real and real world gains there. Then in the third episode, we'll be looking at the resolution from the camera and seeing how it actually performs and if there is some advantage that comes with those added megapixels. So in today's episode, we're going to look at dynamic range and I'm going to do a, a comparison against the Canon 6D, which represented really Canon's best uh, dynamic range sensor from the previous generation. And um, both real world use and then also um, various chart tests have have demonstrated that outside of the 1DX, which it was very similar to, it really had the best uh, dynamic range performance of a Canon sensor, full frame sensor from that generation, a bit better than the 5D Mark III. Then also, um, I actually did an episode where I examined the dynamic range from the new Canon 80D. You can see that here. In that uh, episode, I broke down that uh, comparing it and seeing how, of a, how much of a huge advantage there was increasing dynamic range from the previous generation 70D and then also the EOS M3 and the 80D was the clear winner in that comparison. So both of these I'm going to use as comparison points against the 5D Mark IV. We're going to jump in and take a look to see how it stacks up against them. Okay, we're going to start by taking a look at uh, this particular image that I have shot with um, the 80D, then the 6D, and then with the new 5D Mark IV. And so we're going to be doing some kind of incremental pushes to see how they hold up. And so you can see how the original image looks uh, from each one of these. And, uh, and so um, looking back here, let's just start actually with the 80D image real quick versus the 6D. I have um, just boosted the shadows at a plus 75, pulled down the highlights uh, from the image on each one, and all of them have received the same processing steps. And so on our left side, we've got the 6D. On the right side, we have the 80D. And so if we look at uh, these images side by side, we can see that the ADD is definitely improved in terms of the smoothness um, under the eave here in this dark area. There's just a bit of a look of, of grain there that is nice and smooth on the ADD image. Eventually, we're going to look at this area a little more closely. Right now, it's still um, not lifted enough to tell much of a difference. But overall, you can tell that, you know, surprisingly, even though it is APS-C, that the ADD is doing a great job here. And so now we have the uh, ADD on the left, we have the 5D Mark IV on the right. And so we'll look at that same area underneath here. And so what we're going to see is that the area underneath, it's even a bit smoother on the 5D Mark IV. And more importantly, you can see just a little bit more of a contrast between it. It still looks darker under there on the 5D Mark IV side. And then of course the boards here look nice and bright. And so looking up under that eave, you can tell that it's, it's still a little bit darker here. Um, and so it's a little bit harder to see that. But what we're going to do is we're going to push these shadows a bit more and see what happens. And we have now added to this a one-stop shadow push and so or exposure push. And so now let's uh, compare these side by side. And so here we have the 80D on the left and the 6D on the right. And looking up under this eave area, we can see that there is some color banding that's starting to come into the 6D. And this has been, I think up until just recently, has been really uh, Canon's, I think, best full frame sensor for the last generation outside of maybe the 1DX. But you can see here that there is definitely more color banding that's showing up here and also some in the texture back here of the 6D image. And uh, even if we look um, into the, the brush area here, that there's just a little bit of color banding that's starting to show up there. Okay, and so now we have 5D Mark IV on the left. We have 80D on the right. One thing you will note is this, is that the, the Mark IV, it can bear more sharpening than what the other image is. It's as if the raw files don't have a lot of um, pushed sharpness in them. It allows you to kind of control that, um, which is great. It just means that you have more latitude for that afterward. And so anyway, it's a little less aggressive in that sense. So as we compare here, um, 
I can definitely tell that there's better contrast here that's showing up in the, um, the wood texture along here, and definitely no color noise. Let's go into these more challenging areas. And so here you can tell a difference that there is just a little bit more of a kind of a faded look in the shadow of the um, ADD, although it is already improved over, I mean, vastly improved for APS-C, but you can tell in this dark area, it's just much smoother on the, um, the 5D Mark IV. And likewise under here, there's starting to be some noise that's showing up there that's simply not there on the 5D Mark IV. So one more quick comparison here is we'll look at these uh, compared with now a two-stop push to them. And so we still have raised up the shadows, plus we're now pushing it two stops. And so um, ADD on the left, 60 on the right, and you can definitely see that the 60s starting to get a little bit ugly here. Lots of different kind of color noise and a noisier look in general um, to the image itself. And, and definitely in this dark area here, um, some color noise that's showing up, a little bit of color noise throughout here, different colors, kind of greens. And then even if you'll note um, in, the, uh, in this greenery here that there's some patchy uh, different colors that are showing up there. So once again, ADD, um, even though APS-C is able to outperform um, the 6D in terms of that. But now we're going to compare the ADD with the 5D Mark IV. So um, ADD on the left, 5D Mark IV on the right, and uh, let's go over into the building. Once again, we can see that the 5D Mark IV image is much cleaner. Look at this area through here, um, definitely a better performance. And here, while this is starting to look kind of washed out, it's much smoother looking. It's still um, it's holding up very, very well. You're seeing more of the board showing up. Look at this little spot here. You can see that clearly delineated here while it's just kind of a muddled bit of mess there on the ADD. And so it's recovering those shadows really, really well. And again, if we look under this eave, you're starting to see more of the board texture under there, but what you're not seeing is a lot of color noise like you're seeing on the ADD image. And so um, definitely a real strong improvement for the uh, 5D Mark IV when it comes to this. And so how does that play out in real world recovery of images? So first of all, here is an image where I have recovered both shadows and highlights um, a little bit here, just trying to get a balanced result. And you can see how much of each you've been able to pull back. And so there's before we're able to pull back some of the color that was in the sky that made things pretty. And, and then also able to pull up some of the shadow information here. And uh, if we look here underneath the tree, um, we see that, I mean, there's no color noise at all. And if we go back to the, um, the unrecovered image here, and then we compare it to here, I mean, there's no additional noise that's been inserted here, but rather what we've gotten is just, um, just more of the detail that's, that's showing up. And so uh, that's, a, a very, that's an excellent and a practical application of this. How about an image like this, where we've, um, we've obviously, we've, the shadows here are almost completely crushed. You can just barely see the outline of a little bit of the trees and even the detail on the beach has been lost all along in that shoreline. And so here, if we raise up those shadows and uh, I'm not trying to suggest that this is the optimal look for this image, um, there's enough dynamic range now that you can create something like uh, an HDR type effect um, just raising these shadows. And so uh, there certainly is uh, some noise that is here overall. I've not tried to do anything to eliminate that noise, but what's important is the detail is great here. And as, as we're going to see, see here, um, still lots of, of sharp detail there. And if you're not looking at it at a pixel level and realize I've done nothing to recover noise here, um, that's, we're going from that to that. I mean, you could reduce the uh, file size to eliminate some of that noise. You could actually do some noise reduction. And so anyway, there's just a lot of, of latitude there for recovering lost things. Here in this case, um, this is a, perhaps even a better example because it's at low ISO. So we can see here that um, everything is completely crushed. In this area here, you can just see the area that the, the sun has skimmed over this. So what happens if we uh, do a little work here? And so let's uh, take a look at exactly what I've done in this particular image. 
And so what I've done is I've raised shadows. I've also pushed this over two and a half stops. And, and so let's just uh, take a look and see how it looks there in the shadows. Remember, those shadows were completely, completely lost before. And so how does the information look over here when we examine it? So I can certainly see a little bit of color noise here and a little bit of color noise in the water, but despite this kind of very dramatic result, we can also see that all, there's a lot of detail that's been brought back here, and um, the detail has not turned mushy. And so you have a lot of latitude there for adding some noise reduction, and in, in this area here, we've not lost any kind of information. There's a little bit more of that um, color noise here that um, could be recovered, but just a lot of sharpness overall there. What if you needed to push a little less dramatically? And so in this case, let's take this image here where it's underexposed, but you know, not dramatically so. And so in this case, uh, just to show processing step, let's um, jump here. And so in this case, I have pushed exposure about 1.4 stops. Um, I have reduced the highlights and the shadows. I've raised completely and then just tweaked a little bit with the white and black level. But now let's look at this image and see the result. As you can see here, this is an extremely clean um, result. Oops, with a lot of, um, just a lot of great detail that's recovered there. And, you know, along here, there is, you know, there's the finest bit of, of, of grain that's there, but really nothing that I would be concerned about in the least. Up here, all of that detail going up into the mountain has been restored. And uh, here in this area, just a lot of crisp detail. I didn't even know these people were out on their, uh, out at their barbecue until I uh, took the picture and then I looked at it later on. I certainly couldn't tell that with the naked eye. And so all of that has recovered really, really nicely. And so just to um, put that side by side to give you perspective, we have uh, gone from this here to recovering this image here. I'm just going to give you one more quick example. And uh, that's in a situation where I am exposing, trying to expose for the sky. And, and obviously you could handle this, um, you could handle this by HDR, but um, it was a scene where, you know, the, the sun was right here, um, going right into the camera. And, um, but I, I like the look of this kind of a little cabin that's um, hidden right up here under the rocks. And so I wanted to see what I could do in post to pull that out. And so, um, you know, with those same kind of steps, now in this case, the, the overall effect is a little HDR-ish, and so I would tone back the color a little bit to produce a more natural result. But what's more importantly here for our purposes is how nicely I've been able to restore this cabin and um, all of the information that was completely lost in shadow while not having the sky anymore blown out here. And so as a result, while, um, you know, the sky is a little too blue and, you know, greens are a little too green perhaps, um, all the information is there. And so from here, I could process into an image that um, really had a great looking finish. And so that added dynamic range of the 5D Mark IV is certainly very welcome and certainly is highly effective. So as you can see, Canon's claims of improved dynamic range are certainly true here. Despite having considerably higher resolution, it has managed to produce a much cleaner looking image and uh, much more detail in the shadows and ability to lift those shadows and, and also to pull down the highlights a bit as well. It's worth noting that DxO Mark, whether you put stock in their findings or not, when they tested the sensor of the 5D Mark IV, their conclusion was it is the best sensor yet in a Canon camera, and that's certainly some praise for it. They still have it a little bit behind the Sony a7R II and a little bit further behind the Nikon D810, but considering that this has historically been a point of weakness for Canon, the fact that it's at least on the playing field now with those cameras is certainly an advantage for them because Canon has its own strengths to add to that mix. And so I certainly am encouraged by what I've seen in this comparison. And our next comparison will examine high ISO performance, so stay tuned and we'll be back shortly with that. You can follow me on social media down below. There's also a link to an extensive image gallery of different kinds of scenarios and photos I'm collecting during this review period. And then of course there's a link there if you'd like to shop for the camera. If you haven't already, please click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. 
Have a great day.